So hello everybody, it's Joe from HomestudioCorner.com and today, shocker, I'm in Logic. I figured after the uh, the post the other day on why I use Pro Tools and while I do still think Logic is great, uh, I thought I'd do a video of something I did back um, several months ago, back when I was using Logic, probably more like a year or two ago. Um, and we're going to talk about, this is more of a production tip. So everybody knows background vocals uh, can really make a huge impact on a recording. And there are a lot of different ways to do that. Now, I myself, I sing my own backups. So as you can see in this track here, I've got, you know, six or so uh, background parts done. Now, the hard part with background vocals is, especially if you're not sure what to sing, you just go through and do, you know, five, six takes, blend them together, see if it works. If it doesn't, you delete them all and go back and try something else. Now that, you know, it works, and sometimes that's just the best way for them to come to you. But on this particular song, I did something differently. I knew I wanted background vocals. I didn't know what parts I wanted. So what I did is I pulled up an instrument, and it's just a simple choir patch um, in Logic. And, you know, there's plenty of those in Pro Tools as well. And so the track here is basically a guitar vocal with some piano. You can listen to it. Uh, we'll give a quick listen here. Not at the crown Okay, so it you know it sounds pretty good, relatively full, but background vocals would really make a difference. This is towards the end of the song. Uh, there's not a lot that's been going on aside from guitar vocal and a little piano. So uh, really in this in this spot, a background vocal could really make a huge difference. So what part did I want to do? Well, I pulled up a patch uh, of vocals and and played in a part. Until I liked, the played in a part until I liked what I heard. So this is what I came up with. Not the Okay, so you get the idea. I soloed it there so you could hear what's going on. Uh, so, you know, by itself, it doesn't sound that good, but it, but I got the parts that I want. Let's let's take a quick listen. Okay, then I basically just went in and I had this part o up and um, took a look at it and... Uh, just picked out each note and went through and sang each part, and it worked really well. And what I did actually is after I recorded all of these background vocals, I actually left this part in there too, just to give it a little more fullness. And it sits very far back in the mix, but uh, along with all the vocals, ended up sounding really good. So uh, here's the finished product um, with, I guess, six takes of background vocals. Let's back it up just a little bit so you can hear it come in. Here we go. Grace. fades out to the end. So obviously that's not mixed very well. Uh, the vocal lead vocal got lost, but I really w didn't want to focus on the lead vocal. I wanted to focus on those backgrounds and, and the fullness that they that they brought to the mix. So uh, that's very cool. Next time you're doing background vocals, think about using an instrument track of some sort and a different MIDI instrument to arrange the part, then go and record it. And I think you'll, you'll save yourself some time and probably come up with a better part uh, than just trying to wing it, uh, doing it one take at a time. All right, if you have any other suggestions, how do you do background vocals? I'd love to hear it. Leave a comment on the blog, um, homestudiocorner.com, and um, maybe we can get into a discussion about some different techniques for thickening out a chorus with background vocals. All right, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you around here soon.